Hey guys, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is Dilo and I've got another video for you guys. So today I'm gonna to be giving you guys a really special theory and this is something I've been wanting to do for a very long time, but especially now with all that's coming out, the trailers for Avengers Endgame, I wanna make sure you guys get all your questions answered. So make sure to leave your comments down below and I will engage with you guys. But first, let's just kick it off, all right? So let's start out with the big problem. As you guys already know, Disney just recently bought Fox, but prior to that, they did not have the ability to use the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, the Silver Surfer. Those films and the characters thereof, like the mutants, they are not able to be in the MCU until the deal is closed. Kevin Feige has already confirmed that he has plans to use all of the different characters that are coming over from the Fox properties, and he wants to use them in the MCU. They're going to all be under one big umbrella, and Bob Iger has also confirmed this. With that being said, there's two questions that remain now. How is Marvel going to include the X-Men and the Fantastic Four as major players? And if they do exist already, where have they been? Today I'm gonna focus specifically on answering this question for mutants and the X-Men specifically, because I believe the answer to those questions has been in front of us since April 2014. Let's get into it. So first, if you guys remember the end credit scene to Captain America the Winter Soldier, we saw Wolfgang Von Strucker and a Hydra scientist discussing not only the scepter, Loki's staff, but also the power that it wields and how they've been using it to experiment on people. Wolfgang Von Strucker and the Hydra scientist begin to discuss the unlimited power that is within Loki's scepter. And Loki's scepter, we know, was containing the Mind Stone. And the Mind Stone was used to corrupt the Avengers in the very first Avengers movie. And it was also used to create vision in Age of Ultron. But before the staff was destroyed and the housing was broken to reveal the yellow Mind Stone, which was now on Vision's forehead, the power of the Mind Stone was used by Baron Von Strucker and Hydra to create what we know as miracles. Wanda and Pietro Maximoff, AKA Scarlet Witch, and Quicksilver, the MCU's first mutants. But wait, Daniel, they can't actually be mutants because Fox owned the rights at the time. Aren't miracles and mutants different? Technically, that is correct. But let's look at the cold hard truth of the situation. Legally, we know Marvel can't say mutants. They can't use the word or the phrase mutants. They certainly can't use any of the mutant specific characters like Besser X, they can't use Cyclops, they can't use Beast, they can't use anyone who is specifically just a mutant. So Marvel at the time cleverly used characters that were shared properties between Avengers property and X-Men property, which they could legally get away with doing, which was Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, but also using the phrase miracle to cover up the word mutant. And I do say cover up because that's exactly what that was. We all know they're mutants, but don't take it at face value. Let me get into the details so you guys can know exactly what I'm talking about and where I'm coming from. Just because Marvel can't legally use the word mutants, doesn't mean that the miracles they have in the MCU aren't effectively mutants. Let me explain. All the fans of X-Men know that the X-Men comics and stories were always about conflicting ideas. The whole war between the mutants that are the X-Men and the mutants that are the Brotherhood was a conflict of ideology. It was dominance versus coexistence. The Brotherhood believed that the world was never going to accept you for who you are as a mutant, so you had to fight back and rise up, whereas the, the X-Men believed in peaceful cohabitation and coexistence, and that humans and mutants could get along, and that with training, you could learn to control your powers and become a, a contributing member of society just like any other person. It was basically like Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. It was basically the same thing. There was two guys that were facing the same problem with different worldviews. And they didn't hate each other. They actually were great friends and they respected each other, but they had to go about their life according to their own convictions based on their personal experiences. But keeping with this theory, that holds true here in the MCU as well. So Von Strucker refers to the mutants or the miracles as miracles because of his worldview. He sees this as an excellent opportunity to strike back with equal force at the Avengers because they hadn't seen anything, any force as mighty as the Avengers before. And I use mighty because that's a clever pun. The mighty Avengers needed something else that was equally as mighty and miraculous to stand up to them. And that's what Hydra did was they were experimenting on people to try to get a power that was equal to or greater than the Avengers. And so for Von Strucker to find these people and to be able to experiment on them 
and get it successful, that was something that was a miracle to him. And so he referred to them as miracles. That doesn't mean that they're definitively and exclusively miracles. Now let's continue. But Daniel, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are shared properties and their origin in the MCU doesn't make them out to be mutants. Miracles are experiments and mutants are the next phase in human evolution. Actually, they're both. <clears throat> Let me explain. Let's take a quick look at the details of these miracles in the MCU and how their origin in the MCU explains how the Fox characters are going to be able to jump right back in after Avengers 4. Number one, the twins were evolved using the Mind Stone. This suggests that the transformation they underwent must have been biological, an evolution of the mind to the goal of altering the body as well. If you want to get really scientific about something that is supposed to be fantasy fiction, we can go there. And I think a lot of people hesitate about presenting the X-Men in the MCU because they get hung up on tiny little details. But if you want to go there, the X gene could be something that is a factor in the brain. If you're going to supercharge somebody's brain with a mind stone, with an infinity stone, you would potentially be able to mutate or alter or awaken an X gene that is laid dormant in somebody's body and cause that to allow them to be able to access parts of their brain that maybe contain the X gene where they previously didn't have any access and they weren't able to access those powers. That could be why previous to the Hydra experiments, the twins were not able to use their mutant powers. Number two, Strucker, while talking with his other scientists, admitted that there was a massive body count piling up and that all over the world, there were testing sites where humans were being experimented on using the power of the scepter. However, the body count was piling up and the only surviving experiments were Wanda and Pietro Maximoff. Why was this the case? because they were genetically predisposed to mutation because they already had a dormant mutant X gene. Number three, if both the twins were the only ones to survive the experiment, then they must have had the X gene before the experiment in order to survive. Number four, the X gene was dormant and the twins didn't have any powers prior to the experiment because it was only after the twins were exposed to the power of the Mind Stone, the Infinity Stone, that their mutant X gene was awakened. The X gene that was once dormant became awakened by the power of the Infinity Stone, which was the Mind Stone. Number five, if this is true, then we know the following. Exposure to the Mind Stone and possibly any Infinity Stone has the power and potential to awaken the dormant mutant X genes that are in any human being with X genetics and cause mutation to occur in anyone who is already born with a mutant X gene. Number six. So do all mutants need to be experimented on to get their powers? No. And in fact, I would like to believe that some of the first mutants were already in existence in hiding and likely hiding in plain sight. But how is this possible if we haven't seen them in the movies? Well, here's the thing. Almost everybody in the MCU that has become part of the MCU was hiding in plain sight. We just didn't get a movie with them in it until we got the movie with them in it. It's very simple. Consider this, with Captain Marvel's trailer having dropped, we know that there are scrolls living among us. We know that Hydra has been in existence for the longest time and we just barely found out about them a few years ago. S.H.I.E.L.D. has been around and not everybody knows about S.H.I.E.L.D. Bruce Banner was walking around everywhere just operating operating as a doctor and nobody knew he was the Incredible Hulk until he had an incident, of course. Wakanda was on the map. An entire nation was hidden in plain sight. Of course, there was a camouflaging barrier, but they had their agents all over the place just hiding in plain sight. And we seem to know nothing about them until we start to get a movie with them. That's kind of how it works. Who's to say that mutants like Professor X or Magneto or the Shadow King or Storm or some of these older mutants that have been around for a little while, they were able to access their powers, but hid because essentially they're freak shows. <laughs> they're mutants and they have to live in hiding because they don't know that there's anyone else out there like them. Not to mention the special locations on the shield map from Iron Man 2 but that was still something that they had in the back of their minds. So they plant seeds everywhere. And I believe this is what they were doing in Age of Ultron and at the end of Winter Soldier. I'm not saying those pings are in fact mutants. I'm just proposing that idea because it literally could be anything. Could be anyone. Number seven. Now a quick spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen Avengers Infinity War at this point. I feel bad for you if you haven't, but just know that I'm gonna start talking about Infinity War, but this is kind of where the crux of the theory comes together. So if you're interested, stick around. Um, if it's gonna be too spoilery, you can feel free to just check out and take what I've said so far. 
But number seven, with Avengers Infinity War, we already know that all six Infinity Stones were used in the gauntlet by Thanos to snap and dust out half of the life in the universe. And that specifically includes half the life on Earth where the snap actually took place. And for this to happen, we know that this would have had to have affected the minds, the souls, the bodies, the physical space and matter, the energy and the very existence of all of those lives that got dusted, but also for this equation to work, right? Thanos' intention was to dust half the universe. For this to happen, the Infinity Stones would have had to have taken a collective count of every single living creature on in the universe. But specifically, let's talk about Earth here. Everyone would have been contacted in some way by the mind or soul stones. In order to get down to the equation of half, you have to take into account the full. You have to take all life, contact all of that, and then you can account for half at random. Everyone was touched by the power of the Infinity Stones. In a small or arguably big way, the power of the Infinity Stones impacted every single life on Earth, and everyone was exposed to that power. And the half that were selected were then dusted out by the Infinity Stones. They were not only counted, but contacted and physically touched by the power of the Infinity Stones. But aren't the affected dead? Yes. <laughs> I personally believe that if they were contacted or exposed to the power of the Infinity Stones and some of those individuals had the dormant mutant X gene, then that mutant X gene could be unlocked. That X gene would then be awakened similar to how the twins were awakened in the end credits of Captain America the Winter Soldier and also in Age of Ultron when we get to see the twins in action displaying their miracle mutant abilities. But aren't the affected dead? Weren't they dusted? How can they be potentially mutated if they're dead? That's a very good question. The answer is because they are all coming back. This is no surprise. Honestly, I think that we got all of the surprise and all of the shock out of the way with Avengers Infinity War. And with Avengers 4, we're gonna get to see a very different outcome. We're gonna get to see all of these characters come back. And why am I making this massive assumption? Because Marvel has already confirmed that Black Panther 2, Spider-Man Far From Home, and Doctor Strange 2 are all confirmed. They've all they're all getting dates, they've got releases. We're gonna we're gonna get to see these films, and they do in fact take place after Avengers 4, which means the MCU continues, which means those heroes that all, all of them got dusted, which means all of them are coming back somehow. And this would have to be through either Probably, you know, time travel could be involved, but most likely it's going to be by recollecting the stones, which we know are still intact. The gauntlet was destroyed, but not the mold for the gauntlet and not the stones. So very likely they're going to be regathering the stones and they're going to have to use the power of the infinity stones to undust half of the universe. And what does that mean? It doesn't just mean contact and exposure to the power of the infinity stones on half of the life in the universe, but very specifically, it means that not once but twice, there's going to be contact with the Infinity Stones for half the life in the universe and specifically on Earth. And then that double exposure and the reviving of all of those lives through the power of the Infinity Stones could cause mutation. And here's what I think, is it won't cause mutation for everybody. It's only gonna cause mutation for the people that already had the dormant X gene. That is something that I think not only makes sense, but it's something they're already doing in the MCU. The power of the Infinity Stones can be used to give and grow life, like it did in the case of, say, Vision, or it, how it did with Wanda and Pietro Maximoff, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. It was able to create new life. It was able to bring to life that which was either not alive or things that were alive, grow them into something further evolved. They were able to evolve these miracles. And that's something that Marvel did. That's not something that the Fox properties did. They did this because they know what the X-Men are. They're trying to be as genuine as they can legally. And that's the point, is that miracles are miracles because legally they can't say mutants, but they are mutants effectively. And more importantly than that, they've left the door wide open for mutants to just jump back in. And I think that Infinity War, the dusting, and Avengers 4, the undusting, is going to be what sets up mutants in the MCU because the people who come back, which is half the life of the universe, anyone in that half right there who has a mutant X gene or carries a mutant X gene 
has been doubly exposed to the power of the Infinity Stones, and just like Wanda and Pietro, that is going to cause mutation. That's where we're going to start to see all of these mutants start to rise up out of nowhere. They're going to be in the shopping malls, and all of a sudden there's fire everywhere, or they're, you know, like you're going to be at kids' soccer practice, and one of them, you know, starts flying or phasing through his partners, or, you know, like mind controlling everybody. We're going to start to see chaos erupt, and this is going to be one of probably two or three major factors in phase four of Marvel, where it's gonna start to really heat up. It's gonna start to ramp up with not only the scrolls and like the potential secret invasion happening, but also if you're gonna introduce the possibility for mutants, then you can have a duality happening. You can have the X-Men get involved with secret invasion. That's something that's crazy. We can see them pop in at any age too. They don't even have to be kids. I mean, they very well can be kids, but you can have X-Men of all ages. You could have Beast, Storm, Wolverine, Professor X be older, and you can have some of these other students be younger. Professor X's school for gifted youngsters isn't just for youngsters. It becomes the Xavier Institute of Higher Learning. And it's not necessarily a grade school, it's just a school and also kind of a university. So you get people that are like Cyclops or Gene or Beast, you know, that, that could be older, but you also get people like Iceman, you get people like Nightcrawler, Kitty Pride. you get those types of characters can also be there and be younger. You know, like it could, it could anybody could, could start to mutate. And obviously if you, if you haven't been dusted, but the power of the Infinity Stones has been used twice now, not only do the people that come back that have been undusted get exposed, but everybody is again recalculated in this cosmic event of the Infinity Stone's power being spread throughout the galaxy, this could cause the dormant X gene in all those who have it start to awaken, especially like through puberty. And you can actually retcon the original storyline for mutation and the X gene and mutants right into the MCU. It already works. And I think that it's going to be an amazing segue. Is this how they're gonna do it? I personally believe this is a flawless transition. But if there's kinks in my plot, if there's holes in my theory, I want you guys to let me know. I want you guys to ask me questions. I want you guys to challenge this theory. Does it work? Does it suck? What's going on with this? Does it make sense to you guys? Was I able to lay out a solid argument for how the X-Men could join the MCU? Let me know down below. And if you guys haven't already seen my pilot pitch for the X-Men in the MCU, I think it ties in quite nicely with this. Go back and take a look at that one if you guys want. I've also got fan castings for some of the X-Men I wanna see in the MCU. The original five plus Professor X and Magneto. Check those out, let me know what you guys think about those. And also, uh, just leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on notifications so you can be alerted right away when I go live next time. Or whenever I upload or premiere a video, you guys will be notified immediately so you don't miss anything. Thank you guys so much. You guys, stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video, or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.